Hey everybody, welcome back. So if you've been keeping up with the last few videos, you may have seen that, you know, folks will send videos and stuff into us and we'll kind of work them through handling and so forth. And we've had a lot of verbal critiques from my end looking in, thought it was a good opportunity to go over some of the tap training, hook training, uh, how we actually use those with reticulated pythons and some of the bigger snakes. Um, in order to help facilitate a nice smooth handling session, make sure that their food response is off and all that stuff, kind of go over what we need as far as hooks and just kind of hook training in general, uh, reading the behaviors and how we need to act in order to help them be more comfortable. So today we're gonna be going a little bit deeper into tap training and intrepid exotics. Whether you're a lifelong keeper or just getting started, Help us encourage responsible keeping, conservation, and public education in the interest of keeping our reptiles safe and healthy as we protect them for future generations. You're invited to spend time with us as we experience these awesome animals together on Intrepid Exotics. Now, it just so happens, come downstairs, got an enclosure that needs to be cleaned, so we're gonna do that. Before I open up the enclosure, though, I wanted to hit record and just kind of start talking about some hook stuff. Uh, maybe it'll help some folks out to kind of see it actually done in real time and stuff. Um, as we're doing this, I'm gonna go over some different kinds of hooks. Uh, and I've got three of them here. This conversation came up in forums the other day where somebody was asking, they were saying, all I've got is this flimsy little hook. Where do I get other ones? So I said, in most cases, you don't need the other ones, but it's good to have them on hand. And of course I do. I've got a little two foot hook here. It's got the little rubber protection on it. I need to actually coat this one in some rubber too. But I got a two foot and a three foot. Um, honestly, this thing kind of hangs up there. I never really use it. I don't have any animals that require me to have a hook this size. If we're using something like this, typically you're talking about something venomous where you need to kind of keep them away from like a bigger, bigger venomous snake or whatnot. Uh, typically, even for my 16 foot retakes, this works just fine. I keep this handy. This one stays downstairs. This one stays upstairs with my smaller snakes. Uh, Cause we don't need a whole lot of distance. We just need enough to be able to let them know what's going on. But for the demonstration today, I'm going with this. And the reason being, and we've went, we've went over this before. Um, we don't handle our reticulated pythons or larger snakes, our boas, carpet pythons, afrocs, anacondas, things like that. We don't handle them with the hook. The hook is just a tool to make sure that their feeding response is shut down and maybe kind of help get them moving in the direction that we want them to. And this little flimsy repurposed car antenna with a hook at the end of it will work just fine for that purpose. So what we're gonna do is I've got my mail right here. Like I said, his cage needs to get cleaned out. So we're going to get him out. I'm just gonna use this thing. Matter of fact, I may actually <laughs> make it a little bit shorter, make it about a foot long, just so we can kind of demonstrate how unimportant this thing is once that food response is off. So let me go ahead and get him opened up. And just kind of keep an eye on his behavior. You know, this is a pretty energetic male. As a general rule, he might be lazy today, we'll see. And see, when I first open up the doors, I'm just staying away from his face. I pull the door back and it's always easier too to take the doors off when you're cleaning. But what we're gonna do, <clears throat> all we need to do before we handle this animal is we need to just determine what his frame of mind is. Um, He's awake, we know that. I've been standing here, so he kind of knows what's going on. And the way I always approach these guys, um, you know, kind of depending on their size. Somebody this size, I'm gonna try to approach him maybe a foot away from his head, kind of a foot back, and just kind of get my hands on him, let him know it's time to get handled. And I may or may not even need the hook for that. But in this case, he already sees me. I don't need to tap him to let him know that I'm there. I can just come in and I, at the most I'll do is I may you know, keep the hook right here just to kind of see how he reacts to me touching him. I didn't have to touch him with the hook. I didn't even need the hook there. Um, like I said, we, we handle them with our hands. We don't, we don't handle them with the hook. So 
I mean, that being said, I'm just gonna put this back in my pocket and I'm pulling him up and I'm just kind of positioning him so that as I start pulling him out, you know, his head's away from me, just in case he's a little bit grumpy or something like that. And we're just gonna ease him out. We're gonna keep him supported, which is a really important part. And of course he tries to hang on to everything in his enclosure. And we're just gonna kind of wrap him around me like this. And <laughs> now he's gonna wanna go ahead and run off and explore and, and all that other stuff. So we're gonna have to probably, I don't know, I may put him on a chair or something. Maybe I'll be able to do this with him wrapped around me for right now. But as you guys can see, I mean, if, if we're working with socialized animals, even if they're, hey, hey, we're not done in there yet. Come on, buddy. And the whole point is, is like I said, just, just seeing what their frame of mind is, getting your hands on them. Once you've got your hands on them, if you've spent any time at all handling these guys, they're typically gonna be good. Um, to the point, like you see here, where I can just go ahead and bring him out. <clears throat> Let's see if we can do some one-handed cleaning here. <laughs> this is one boy who's going to be really excited when it's time to get back outside we get him out as much as we can and he is such a ball of energy he really needs a lot bigger enclosure than this but um like i said we compensate by making sure we get him as much exercise as possible and by the time we get done working him out man he goes in here he goes to sleep and and that's it <laughs> <laughs> but his permanent enclosure, of course, he's going to get, he's going to get bigger too. So his permanent enclosure is going to be substantially bigger than that. So get in there. Come on. You know, another thing about these guys too, is, you know, you hear everybody talk about that reticulated pipe, especially with the males, you know, that how spicy they are and how aggressive the males can be, whatnot. These guys are incredibly tolerant, man. They really are. You'll see it time and time again as we're, you know, especially as we get the bigger snakes out, the amount of jostling around and the, um, I mean, just the amount of handling that these guys just so nonchalantly take um, is really cool. These are, these are really forgiving animals for the most part. Um, if you're doing the right things, if you're not, well, um, that's when you start running into potential problems and stuff. Now, a couple things with him too. Like I said, I've got to take him out a lot because he's in a little bit smaller enclosure. I also like to give these guys a big enough water receptacle that I can get into. But with him, really, it would take away so much of the floor space in there for him that I've just got a smaller water dish in there for him. So one of the things that we'll do is we'll spray him down, get the, keep the humidity up and stuff like that in there. Just enough. And you guys will see, you know, even with these males, even with their with them being really energetic and stuff like that, that may set a lot of people off. It may, you know, make you think that that snake is just, you know, dead set on coming to get you. But just because a retic is energetic, you know, it doesn't mean that, uh, doesn't mean that they're getting ready to bite all the time. These animals are really athletic um, and they, they will burn a lot of energy sometimes, man. They get fired up and they get ready to do stuff and, and run around. And, you know, it can intimidate somebody if you're not used to it, but you really got to, um, just get yourself into the habit of, you know, interacting with these guys confidently. If you're worried about getting bit by them, then you're just going to spoil the whole thing, you know, and it's no fun if you're handling an animal and you're constantly afraid of getting bit, you know, this guy, I trust him. You know, like I said, once he's out, once I'm sure he doesn't have a food response, I'm not worried about his head. 
He can come over, put his head on my hand, run it through my hands, all this other stuff. You know, he's perfectly fine. Um, although he's moving around and stuff like that and shooting, uh, really don't worry about him one bit. So anyway, I hope that helped a little bit. Um, you know, kind of to summarize all of that stuff, it's just, you know, the whole key when we're working with these guys is getting your hands on them. Um, especially if you've worked with your animals for a while, as soon as your hand is on that animal, they should recognize that, okay, it's time to get handled. Um, pretty much with all of my animals, as soon as my hand touches them, I'm not worried about getting bit because I've already watched them, seen what their demeanor's like. I've got the hook handy in case they, you know, start getting anxious and stuff like that. I could tap their head away until I get them into thinking mode and stuff like that. But, you know, don't let these guys scare you just because they might be moving fast or they might be looking really energetic. Um, something that I didn't mention at the beginning of this is it's feeding today and I just came from upstairs getting all the rats and rabbits and stuff together. So I know my hands still smell like food to some degree. So if I was ever going to get bit, having that scent on my hands, working with these guys, I would have gotten bit. But like I said, these animals are really intelligent and... You know, you work with them long enough. Let, let me put the caveat in there of, you know, make sure you are washing your hands and stuff like that after you're dealing with feeders because every animal is going to react a little different. I don't worry about it with these guys because I know they recognize the difference between handling and feeding, especially after I've given them enough time and I've kind of tapped their food response down and stuff like that. I don't worry about it. So if they pick up a scent of a rodent or something like that, it's not like they're going to attack me and try and eat me. Um, <clears throat> but you know, that's, of course, that's something just to keep in the back of your mind. Um, if you're not that comfortable with your animals, if they're not that well socialized, you need to be taking every precaution. Um, but like, I just wanted to throw that in as a caveat, just to show that, you know, even under those circumstances, not even worried a little bit about getting bit by him. Uh, so something to think about. Uh, hope that helped. Uh, go ahead. Jump down, get subscribed to the channel, jump down to comments and all that stuff. Let me know what you think. Let me know if there's anything else that you want me to go into more detail about and stuff like that. And um, we're going to go ahead and get ready to start feeding. And I'm probably going to start doing some stuff with the monitor lizards here in a bit as well. Um, maybe we'll be able to get a good video about, out about them again today as well. So we'll see. You guys have an outstanding day and we'll see you next time on Intrepid Exotics.